Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my bookshelf. Today I am going to be doing a book related video, obviously, and I'm going to be talking through the books that I have read so far, the books I'm currently reading and the books I also plan to read for the rest of this winter. Now I kind of wanted to do this at the start of Jan, but I wanted to get some other videos up first. So here we are. I've got some a little pile of books that I'm currently reading and reading quite a few. We're just going to ignore how big the pile is. But I'm going to talk you through first what books that I've read currently. Um, I'm really excited to start doing more book content. Um, I love doing book style blog posts and I feel like I wanted to do a few more YouTube videos of it because I read a lot and I love sharing what reads I recommend on my Instagram and stuff like that. So I thought I would branch it out in a bit more of a long form fashion on here. So let's get cracking. So apparently I only read one book in December according to my good reason. I don't think that's right. <laughs> the one book that I apparently read in December was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Now this was a book that had been recommended to me a lot. A lot of friends have recommended it to me. Someone said I could actually play Libby if this was made into a, if this was adapted, which I'm like, just saying, just putting it out into the universe, you never know. If you don't know what the plot is, basically a baby is found in a cot in a house and downstairs are three dead bodies. And it's the whole thing of, you know, how did it end up happening? Was it a suicide pact? Was it murder? And then obviously following the life of this baby who has now grown up, which is Libby, and her kind of trying to find out what's going on. And it follows also the, some of the other characters that are involved with this house, basically. It just all centres around this house. I gave this a five stars. Well, like a 4.5. Mainly because I found it was just such a nice book, an easy book, an easy thriller to end the year with. And it just had everything I wanted in it. It was such an easy read, as in... Like the prose was really easy to read. You had kind of three different characters situation going on. That's really funny because the book I'm going to talk about in a minute is very similar in that in that kind of layout of characters. And I think it was it's quite nice if you want quite a snappy read because the chapters are quite short. Um, so I think if you're like in a reading slump or if you just generally prefer those type of books. This would be really awesome. And I think the only thing that I found is I did have some unanswered questions, especially around Henry's character, but obviously there is a sequel, which I'm really excited to read. I'm hopefully going to read that this year. So maybe some of those questions will be cleared up in that, I don't know. But I think if this was going to be a standalone book, I'd be a bit like, what's, what's, what's happened with Henry? I don't, I don't know. I would highly recommend that if you like thrillers, crime, that sort of thing, um, and short chapters, then this would be a perfect read for you. Okay, so let's move on to the next book that I actually finished today. Today was a great day. I finished a book and I finished a notebook. Like that's a good sign of a productive day. <laughs> so the book that I've just finished is The Eye of the Beholder by Margie Orford. This was very kindly sent to me by Canon Gate as part of their January read along. They do like a read along every month and um, you can join in. And obviously if they don't have the book, they'll send it to you. So they very kindly sent me this. This was like the perfect, perfect January book. It's really similar um, to The Family Upstairs in the fact that it's a very similar setup. As I said, you're following three characters and it kind of circles from each character. And it kind of goes back to each one in turn. The also other thing that is similar is also got short chapters. So, I mean, they're not like super, super short. You know, like I found that I could maybe little read a chapter before bed. But I did find that again, I read through this so quickly. And obviously with the read along, you have to keep to the dates. That was really hard with this. I really enjoyed this. Um, it, this time it centers around three women. And um, they're all kind of going through or have gone through some form of sexual abuse. Um, or misogyny or kind of um, child abuse like in their past they kind of end up crossing paths and end up kind of just touching each other's life um, without them really knowing um, apart from one meeting um, near towards the end and the thing that I really liked about this is, is that all the characters are flawed and even though I didn't re like really relate to them all the time, there were moments in here that I where I kind of had that spark of 
relating to them and feeling for them and feeling a lot of compassion for them sometimes they annoyed me which i do actually like in a book i do love it when a when a character annoys me but not too much like it's a little annoyance like mm, why did you do that why did you say that like that sort of thing and this book um i found that it had like the perfect amount of annoyance which was really good so i actually rated this well i'm deliberating because i've just finished it today i feel like it would take a couple of days for me to really decide i'm kind of i'm balanced between a 4.75 and a 5 which is a great start to the year like it's a really good start and obviously because it's set in winter and it's part of it is set in like a snowy landscape it's just a really nice comfy read again it's kind of crime thriller thriller um i mentioned some of the trigger warnings i will put trigger warnings either on the screen or in the description box below um, just so you guys know for any of these titles it'll be just make life easier um but yeah i really enjoyed reading this and um i'm excited to see um what other books that margie orford has written as well okay let's go on to some current books now i'm in a situation where i've i'm reading a lot of books at once and i'm not sure how i feel about it i've never been that sort of person i've always dedicated myself to one book at a time maybe two if i've got like a physical book and my kindle but no i have one i'm not counting there's one i'm not counting because i think i'm gonna do not finish it basically so i've got one on my kindle two three four. Oh my god i can't believe i can't read it five i've got five books on the go now please just you know give before you have a go at me give me the benefit of the doubt these are all very different so let me start with this one. So one of my challenges that I wanted to do for this year, reading wise, I wanted to read the complete Sherlock Holmes volume. So I've got one, volume one here and I have got volume two here. So some books are actually, they're all in one, but I've got, they're in two volumes. So one of the things I really wanted to do was just read all of them this year. And looking, I looked at kind of how they were spaced out and you've obviously got some of like the short stories and then like the collections. So my plan was, because they kind of range between like 100 to 300 pages, I wanted to read one and then read another book and then come back. Because I feel like you can get in a right rut sometimes when you're reading things like this. And if you know that you're gonna be spacing things out, I feel like you enjoy them much better. So, so far I have read a Study in Scarlet, which I really enjoyed because I, I liked how it kind of set everything up and I liked how when they were, like the when we were learning about what, what the um, crime was and the person who committed it, it kind of started its own story, which I really liked. It kind of transported you, which I really enjoyed. So it was, that was a really great read and obviously it was only about 100 pages. And then the second one I read was A Sign of Four, I think, which interestingly, I'm reading um, with some other people in the Book Wanderers group, shout out to them. A lot of the people who were reading it said the same thing about The Sign of Four is that it didn't, just didn't hit the mark. Like just, there is a lull in the story and it's an intentional lull, but the lull just went on for too long. <laughs> Like, I'm normally a very patient person. Like, I happily will sit and read, like, a long book. I read Lord of the Rings, for goodness sake, you know. I did skip a couple of full description pages. But we won't mention that. After this, that was, like, a two or three star, I would probably say. Next, after that, we have, like, the, the collections. One of the collections. So we start off with The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. So that's going to be a bit of a beast that I'm going to be starting on um, next when I have finished this in-between book, as I'm calling it. Um, all of my reads that I would normally read, I'm just slotting them in between these. So I'm reading The Gift of Rain by Tan Tuan Eng. Uh, this was also very certainly kindly sent to me by Canon Gate. I read The Garden of Evening Mist as part of one of their read-alongs and I just fell in love, just fell in love with their writing style. I backpacked around Southeast Asia in 2017 and, well, I mean, I've only read two so far, but at the moment, all of their books are set in Malaysia and it just brought me back. So this one is about a 
boy who meets a Japanese diplomat. This is kind of just before, I think it's ju very just before the Second World War. And he meets a Japanese diplomat who is living um, on their family's island. The Japanese diplomat starts to um, train um, Philip, who's the boy's name, in a a Aikido. I'm really sorry if I said that wrong. Um, I'm just trying to pronounce it um, how it's written. So he's obviously training him physically, mentally, and he's kind of changing um, as a person as he goes along. And he's kind of also getting to know a little bit more about what um, what this Japanese diplomat does. It's quite interesting because if you've got some things kind of going on with the war, it's all a bit of a secret at the moment where I'm up to, but also you've just got the lovely landscape of Georgetown and Penang and they've just gone to Kuala Lumpur and um, Ipo as well which is in the Cameron Highlands and it's just lovely because the, the things that they describe and the places they describe, I then have a mental picture of when I went there and I was like, oh, I went there, I did this and things like that. So I'm really enjoying this. Now, um, these next two are kind of ongoing reads. So I've got Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur and I'm just kind of reading this section by section. I'm, I think, I mean, I've only got two sections left and so far I'm like, it's okay. But I, I mean, if I just sat around and down and read this, I could read this in like five minutes. I love poetry. But I just found, I've just found that there are some poems that have really stuck out to me and there's some that have, I don't know, just haven't gripped me, haven't hit me. Like, I like poetry that really hits home, um, either with clever wordplay or what the message that they're trying to say. And I think, I don't know whether it's because they're all in sections and it kind of creates a story. I don't know. Um, it might be also because they're short form and maybe I like a long form poem. A brief interlude to uh, change the battery. It's just regular. It's the interval time, guys. I should just leave the like a time space and how long it took me to change my camera battery. <laughs> okay, and then the other thing that I am reading, um, which is kind of an ongoing thing, is King Lear. So I read, where is it? Here we go, Lear Wife by J.R. Thorpe and is based on King Lear and it just gave me the urge to read King Lear again. So on and off I've been delving back into King Lear and really enjoying it. I can't, I can't remember the last time I read this, it was a while ago, but I'm enjoying, I'm, en I'm just enjoying it again. Like, the Learwife gave me a new appreciation for King Lear and just kind of got me into a Shakespeare mode. I even bought the other day, let me show you. I bought this beautiful edition um, from a little shop, a little independent bookshop. This is an edition published by Chilton Publishing and it's just the most beautiful cover. And this is the sonnets. And I have the sonnets, I think just randomly, like random bits of paper. I don't actually have a nice copy of the sonnets. It's got gold leaf. Uh, yeah, I'm just obsessed. I did, so I did treat myself. I was supposed to be on a, on a book buy, book buying ban. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Mm, I broke it. <laughs> and then the last thing that I'm currently reading that's on my Kindle, I'm reading Akatar, A Court of Thorn and Roses. Again, this is a series I've been trying to get to and I just haven't got to yet. And now here I am and I'm reading it. I'm enjoying it. It is, how can I describe this? It is very YA, like just the writing style. And I'm, I just have that in the back of my head, but I'm secretly loving every minute. Now I'm going to go on to the plan of what I plan to read. Now, one thing which I hadn't kind of in, in like, like thought I was going to be putting on this list, and it's because it's part of a readathon, um, is Sense and Sensibility. Now I have this massive. Look at the size of this. This is massive. Um, this is a big, complete novels of Jane Austen, and um, we are going to be reading Sense and Sensibility um, as part of the the book wanderers or literary society i think it's the literary society on goodreads and um this is the one i haven't got to yet i have read what have i read i've read northanger abbey and i've read emma so sense and sensibility it is i'm going to try and read that in feb we'll see how it goes it's going to be quite a long one so it might cross over into spring but that's fine because it is a big one and i did want to try and do it because it's it's one I've been meaning to get to and, and like buddy reads and stuff really help me to get to the books that I've been meaning to get to. Okay, so the first, well, the, that was that, I've redone the first one. 
Um, the next book I want to read is The Night Ship by Jess Kidd. Jess Kidd is one of my all-time favourite authors. Uh, I first came across her when I read Things in Jars, which will probably be one of my favourite books of all time. I love, th that was the book I found that I read that made me realise I love historical fiction, but, but especially historical crime fiction. I just loved it absolutely loved it and so this was a copy that i was sent uh last summer and i've not got to yet i'm very surprised that i haven't got to it yet and again very very kindly sent to me by canon gate and this is basically um uh, this is um set in 1628 and basically it's it, it's kind of again split between two characters and it's there's a girl who's on search for her father and she boards a ship and during this long journey um she kind of gets into the whole kind of ship world but also she's starting to uncover some secrets that are happening on the ship and it, it kind of gives me the devil in the dark water vibes which i i yeah, i enjoyed it's not my favorite stuart turnton book but um it, it was definitely i still loved it it was still a good book and then it also goes to um back and forth between um 1989 and a boy who his mother's just passed away and um, he is placed in the care of his grandfather. And again, he's kind of struggling with lots of different things going on in his life. I mean, this says, it's an enthralling tale of brutality, providence and friendship and of two children hundreds of years apart whose fates are inextricably bound together. I just kind of love these sort of books and I'm obviously in the mood for it because I've read two books that are of a similar sort of like vibe. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to read that. Um, and just get back into the Jess Kid love. And then the next book that I want to read is Montmorency by Eleanor Updale. I've had this book on my shelf for a stupidly long time. <laughs> like it's embarrassing. I bought it from a bookshop that used to be open in my town, which is now shut. I bought this when I was in school and I loved the idea. Obviously again, I was obviously trying to, I was into like historical crime even back then because this is basically um it's kind of like sherlock vibes after he's released from prison um montmorency leads a double life so he leads a double life as montmorency who's like an aristocrat and then also going between a servant called scarpa and he um seems to be committing all of these thefts but then something kind of happens and he has to something kind of um or someone is trying to destroy him and so it's kind of going along those lines this is a super short book i think as well this is like 170 pages or, or something like that so i will probably get through this quite quickly but i really want to get to this this year this is something i really want to get to now let's go with one more and this one <laughs> i'm really petty in the fact that i've gone for one that literally has the word winter on the front cover uh, this is a winter's promise um by christelle davos there's almost like i think there's like these different worlds and you can kind of see it on the front cover and a girl is promised a marriage in a certain to to someone who lives in um the icy pole she goes to the city where he lives and just kind of realizes that she is being used and all that sort of thing and um, again this has been on my bookshelf for a while not as long as montmorency but quite a while so um and because it's winter i thought i would get to it in winter i mean i probably won't i'll probably say this and i probably won't get to it until like i don't know summer um but i felt like again nice wintry setting might as well give it a go so those are the books that i have been loving and have been wanting to read uh for this wintry season i hope you enjoyed it i would love to know what you've read um so far this winter or if you've got any plans to read anything this winter do let me know and i'll leave all links below um to any of the books and any of the other things that i mentioned in this video thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one Mwah. bye